Hello, and welcome back to another episode recap where I'll lay out five things that I learned from my conversation with a historical expert. Today, we're recapping the conversation that I had with Eric Marcus about the historical accuracy of the movie Stonewall. Eric is a journalist and the founder and host of the extremely popular Making Gay History podcast. Now, if you haven't had the time to listen to my entire interview with Eric yet, well, that's why I'm here today in this video to recap the five things that I learned about the historical accuracy of the movie Stonewall with Eric Marcus. So let's get started. Number one, the Danny problem. The movie's main character is a boy from the Midwest named Danny. The movie even goes so far as to show Danny as being the very first one to throw a brick at the Stonewall Inn. Unfortunately, as Eric told me, that poses a central problem for the film because the truth is, we don't really know who threw the first rock. Eric also pointed out the kids involved in the uprising were from a wide range of races and ethnicities, so... The idea the movie puts forward that a blonde boy from the Midwest was the first person to throw the rock at Stonewall was, as Eric put it, a mistake. Number two, the Mattachine Society. One of the big plot points in the movie revolves around the Mattachine Society, which, as the movie describes it, was a gay rights organization. Eric explained that the Mattachine Society was indeed a real group although he had some issues with the way the movie portrayed one of the chapter leaders, Frank Kameny. But he did point out the movie was correct to indicate that Frank's fight during his life was against the federal ban on gay employees. Number three, the uprising itself. Some positive feedback Eric had from the movie revolved around how the Stonewall uprising itself was shown. As he told me, a lot of times the myth around Stonewall today has grown into people trying to say the uprising was a massive riot with Molotov cocktails, firebombs, and drag queens dancing in the streets with full regalia and high heels. But as he explained, the truth is that the uprising was a lot smaller. So it was a lot closer to the small uprising we see in the movie. There weren't any Molotov cocktails or firebombs. And he also recalled asking about the high heels to someone who was allegedly there. And the reply was, there's no way they'd wear high heels to the Stonewall because you can't run from the cops in high heels. Dirty cops. One of the things that stood out to me was how prevalent police corruption was in the storyline of the movie. They got paid off by the mob. They beat unarmed civilians simply because they're gay and more. The cops were all about fear and intimidation instead of protecting and serving. And after talking to Eric, unfortunately, it seems there's a lot more truth to that than not. For example, Eric told me how the whole reason the Stonewall was run by the mob was because that offered a layer of protection from the police. Of course, the mob was doing that simply because they made plenty of money out of the deal and then paid some of that money to the cops in form of payoffs. But think about that. We think of how the police are supposed to protect and serve. We think of the mob as the criminals who are forcing business owners to pay protection money. But the roles were reversed here. The mob ran the Stonewall in because they were able to pay off the cops and offer protection against the police. Number five, it's not ancient history. So many times as we're watching movies, it's easy to think, ah, that happened back then, but things are so much better now. Even though the Stonewall Uprising was back in 1969 and Frank Kameny was fighting for the rights of gay employees, it wasn't until just this year, 2020, that the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that gay and transgender employees are protected under the Civil Rights Act of 1964. And Eric pointed out that Decades-long fight was just one example of how gay people are trying to get basic human rights. For example, he explained that in some parts of the world, people are hunted down simply because they're gay. Here in the U.S., there are some places where you can lose your house or apartment simply because you're gay. So even though the movie may have been set decades ago, its message is still valid today. That's all for today, and hopefully you enjoyed this episode recap of five things that I learned from Eric Marcus about the historical accuracy of the movie Stonewall. 
Now, my chat with Eric was about an hour long, so we talked about a lot more than just the things that I've brought up in this video. But you can listen to that whole interview right now for free over at basedonatruestorypodcast.com slash 165. Once again, that's basedonatruestorypodcast.com slash 165. And if you're looking for even more history that you've probably never learned in school, go check out Eric's excellent podcast called Making Gay History. In the meantime, for more recaps and full-length episodes of Based on a True Story, hit that subscribe button right now. Thanks for watching.